All right, super. I'm excited to be with you. As was stated, my name is Ed Marks, and I really started in healthcare when I was 16. I was a janitor at a medical facility at Peterson Air Force Base in Colorado, and it was there that my eyes were opened about the, uh, the sacred work of healthcare. And I wanted to be a part of it. Even though I was a janitor, I knew that what I did mattered. And I also knew at that point in my life that I had a calling to get involved more in healthcare. So I became a combat medic, and I, I became an anesthesia technologist, and I continued to evolve my skills and, and talents, and, and all, all these wonderful opportunities opened up. But whether I was a janitor or doing something else on the combat field, I knew that we had the ability to help save people's lives, and that's what I'm driven by. So whatever I can share, I'm just one person's journey. Everyone has a different journey. You learn a little bit from everyone. So I'm hopeful that one thing that I share today might help you because I think we're all in here because we have that same common vision. And that's ultimately we want to leverage technology to enable better clinical and business outcomes for the organization. So whether we're on the provider side, enterprise side, or whether you're on the, on the side of, of development, of product, or of a, as a partner. So really, that's, that's what I'm here to share. So in a couple of minutes, I hope to impart something from you as I sit back in the audience as well and learn from others that speak. So this is the thing I want to talk about, a common framework just to get, set a baseline. I think you'll understand that probably better than I do. Talk about rules to live by. That's what I want to get to. And then I'm going to share with you some outcomes. I could spend hours telling you about outcomes of how my organization that I've been a part of, that I've been blessed to serve with, have, have done things working with partners to save lives. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So I'll give you some examples. So, the generic cycle, right? And, and I think the panel after this is going to flush this out in even more detail. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But I, you all know this, like I said, better than I do. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But this is one generic cycle, how it all works. But I'm going to give you some practical advice from the provider side, from the enterprise side, how I've seen this work in the organizations that I've served, whether it was in Cleveland, Ohio, or a large academic health system where I was CIO or CIO in Texas uh, for Texas Health Resources. And a little bit here in New York City, but uh, we, it's, we're not quite as evolved yet there. So it's really about no is the concept I'm going to talk to you about. Not no as in N-O, but no as in K-N-O-W. So you have to know me. And when I say me, I mean me personally, but you have to know my organization. So when we get approached, which we do all the time by startups and established companies, it's I think it's almost comical sometimes how much they don't know me. So I think it's worth the time and investment to know me and to know the organization. So you have to know the person that you're trying to pitch to at a fairly deep level. And so sometimes people have done a lot of research. And the only reason I met with them, despite my heavy schedule, was because they knew so much. I was like so impressed how they find all that out, because I wanted to go back and figure out how to close some of those gaps, because I was like, whoa, that's way too much transparency. But it showed me, wow, that person's really interested. So I met with them. So you have to know me. Then you have to obviously have to know my organization. So again, it amazes me how many people come, try to make a pitch, and work with us, and partner, and don't know the organization. Oh, you have, I didn't know you had a health plan. Uh, I didn't know you had XYZ software as your primary electronic health record. I'm just giving you some examples. But it's true, they didn't know the organization. So, so if you don't know me, if you come in there without knowing anything about me or anything about my organization, I, I, I wouldn't meet with you. And when I say I, I, I believe I represent a lot of the philosophy and culture of the organizations that I had the opportunity to serve with. So that's one thing, is know me. Know the vision of the organization. Again, it's almost like an interview situation. Like when I was preparing to interview for, for jobs, I would always know about the person that I'm interviewing with what articles they had recently authored, or, or tweets that they had, or I'd know the organization, the size of the organization, all the basic things about the organization, but I'd also know the vision. But again, this may seem basic to some of you, but I'm telling you, 90% of the people part that who want to partner with my organizations don't know this. They don't know the vision of the organization. They cannot articulate it. They don't know where we're going, but yet they have a product that's going to solve all of our problems. So. It, it always sort of confounds me. So know me, know my organization, and know the vision of the organization. And then what's my pain? What's the pain of the organization? So again, someone has a great product, 
but it may not really fit with our organization because uh, they don't know our pain. So how do you know an organization's pain? So it goes back to the first two things I already talked about, knowing me, organization, and knowing our vision. So every organization has a pain, and ideally there's, there's a company out there we can partner with to solve that pain. But if you don't know the pain and it's just generic, then you're not gonna get an audience or you won't be successful. And even if you were successful in getting in, if you got to a pilot or whatever the best form of doing something like that is called, it probably won't be successful because you're probably not hitting a pain point. So you have to understand the pain. And again, I'm gonna give you three examples that wrap all these no's uh, into something that actually happened, something tangible. So know yourself. So a lot of times, the partners that come to us don't even know themselves. They might be, uh, they might think they're a lion, but really they're just a cat. And so you don't want us to find that out about you, so you have to know that first. So a lot of times people come in as this great, they have the solution, the end all be all, it's gonna solve everything, they understand our pain, and, and they're a great company, they can do all these things, and they oversell themselves. And we'll see through it pretty quickly, and then everything falls apart after that because we've lost that trust. So it's very important to have this trusting relationship. And if you don't know me, you don't know my organization, you don't know my vision, it's going to be hard for me to trust. You don't know my pain, or you say you do, but you really don't, and then you sell yourself to be something that you aren't, is, again, is going to break the trust or not enable trust to happen, and the likelihood of us partnering together is probably not going to happen. Know your risks. So a lot of times people want to partner with us and our partnership model and the organizations that I've worked with is always shared risk. So how much risk are you willing to take? So have you thought that through? Is it a financial risk? Is it a reputational risk? How far are you willing to go? What level of bet are you willing to make in working with us? So you have to understand that ahead of time, not while you're on it. So I like to climb mountains. I climb the world's highest peaks. So this, we're climbing Mount Elbrus. So this is a shot from the highest peak in Europe. And we understood the risks when we climb, what the risks are. We don't start climbing and say, oh, wow, we might die. We know we might die. So we've, we, so we've made plans to try to keep that from happening. But it's amazing. A lot of times people don't know what risks they're willing to take, both on the organizational side, partner side, and also on, on the uh, creator side. Measurement. So again, some of these, you'll say, those are pretty basic. And I agree with you, they are. But they're not done very often. And that's one way you can differentiate yourself from others. Someone was presenting earlier, which I thought was spot on, talking about, you know, do you have the, the best product? And is the market ready? But also, how, do you, how are you able to sort of measure all that so that you know when you have achieved success or where you're trying to go. So you have to know, you have to know your measurement. You have to know how do you know that you've achieved your goal of what you're trying to accomplish. So you saw the pain, you knew the pain, so you're filling that gap to solve that pain, but how do you measure? And so are you able to measure? And a lot of times people just say, oh, see, look, it's good. How do you measure success? And you have to have those conversations ahead of time, not afterwards, because what you think is success is probably a lot different than what I think is success unless we spend some time talking about it. So not only know myself, know my organization, know my vision, know the product, know the pain, know the gap, know how to measure, and then know how to partner. So how do you partner? So a lot of times we just assume we each, each of us know what your role is versus my role. And then when something falls apart, something doesn't work right, we, we point fingers at each other. Well, how did this happen? And a lot of times it's because of lack of role clarity. Who's supposed to do what? So we've done some pretty cool things. Like I said, I'll show you here in a second, where we save people's lives. But the only way we got there is because we knew whose role was whose. And when something went wrong, which of course something will go wrong, but because you have this trusted relationship because we did all the no's, we worked through it. When something goes wrong, we're like, like oh, there's where it went wrong. Well, at least we can identify it, and now we can fix it instead of blaming one another and having things fall apart. So you have to know whose role, who's taking lead, who's roped up to who. So let me give you three examples. So we opened up this brand new hospital. It, at the time, it was four years ago. At the time, likely the most 
technically advanced hospital uh, in the country. So this is in Dallas, Texas, Alliance, Texas. So one of the things we want to do is be completely paperless. We were already stage seven and won the Davies Award and won all these awards for whatever. Uh, but we won those a lot with partners, such as people like yourself or companies like yourself in this room. And one of the things we want to do is be completely paperless. It meant everything paperless. So not just electronic health record, but everything. So if you go to a lot of hospitals, you'll see on the door, there's lots of paper on doors that are taped up there. It might say NPO, rem reminding the nurse, the doctor, or di the dietary staff not to feed the patient. So nothing by mouth. Or there might be something about fall risks that this patient is at risk for a fall. And of course, they don't want to say fall risk because that makes the patient feel bad or the family feel bad. So they do all these little tricks. So we decided we didn't want that. But we, we kind of had some IP. We kind of knew what we wanted to do, but we didn't have the capability. So we partnered with a small company. And so we developed a system where everything was like an iPad. It, the, the picture here actually doesn't show, but it's an iPad on the door or next to the door. And it had the electronic health record and tons of information that was integrated into that iPad type of device, but it also had something about fall risk. And in five years since that hospital has been open, there's been no falls. So for those of you who really understand pain points in healthcare, it falls. Falls are a terrible thing from a quality perspective. It can kill people. It certainly makes their length of stay a lot longer. And it's just not good for patient satisfaction. I mean, there's so many reasons, right? It's pretty obvious. Zero falls, thanks to a partner. We then commoditized that product. And now it's being bought by other hospitals. And my former employer makes money now. And that was always one of my sub goals was take IT, leverage it as an asset in our organization, and actually make money and not become a cost center. So that's, that's one example. Another example is readmissions, right? Readmissions is a huge pain point for many, many organizations. So we worked with a startup company. And they had great vision. They understood. They spent a lot of time with me. They knew me, my organization. They understood our vision. They understand the pain. So the CFO would articulate that every readmission that we didn't get reimbursed for because it was related to CHF or diabetes cost us about $55,000. Well, this company said, you know what? We can solve that for $1,000. So we'll use some BI that we had capabilities with, some business intelligence. And we were able to predict with a 95% accuracy who's going to come back in 30 days or less, who is likely to come back. 30 days or less. So whenever we identified that patient, we sent him home with his Bluetooth kit. And they went home with his Bluetooth kit. And these were elderly patients typically. And people said, oh my gosh, the, the, our health help desk can get flooded with calls because they're not going to know how to set anything up. We'd never had, the time I was there, never had one call. So they went home, they set up these things. And, and we had a nurse that would monitor this all remotely, of course, looking at the data every day. And they would call the patient whenever they saw some sort of an anomaly hey, we noticed that uh, you didn't log in you know, your medication today. Or we noticed that your weight's down or your blood glucose level is off. What's going on? And so as a result, we reduced readmissions by almost 40%. That's huge financially. You're talking millions and millions and millions of dollars. And again, from a clinical quality perspective, a huge impact. So another example with this startup company we worked with, they knew us. They knew our vision. They knew our pain. They knew who they were. They knew their capabilities were limited. And they said that, but they showed us the line that they were going to be, and we would grow with them. And today, they're a very, very successful company that you'd recognize. And then uh, my last example, but like I said, I give you, hun not hundreds, but I give you dozens of examples. This is one of my favorites, because this one also directly saves lives. So the biggest issue we have, the biggest pain point every hospital has is VTE, venous thromboembolism. And this is blood clotting. So this is something that, that you get at the hospital. You didn't go to the hospital because you had VTE. This is something we gave you. So VTE kills more people in this country on an annual basis than ca breast cancer, auto fatalities, and smoking. It's like 100,000 people die a year with something that they have happened while they're in the hospital. That's so wrong. And VTE is the biggest killer of them all. And so one of the reasons, even though we all have a sophisticated electronic health records, is they use this, this model called the Cabrini model. So it was named after a physician many, many, well, a, a generation or two ago that developed this model. And the model is quite good, but it's all manual. So a physician would have to stop what they're doing and then do this manual calculation. They don't do it. They just kind of they do the best that they can with the data that they have. 
Well, as a result, though, we have VTE is a major, major issue. So we work with a startup company. We had the IP. We brought the IP to bear. We had some great physicians that worked, worked served with me in IT. And we got together, and we developed this automated, automated calculator that sat on top of our electronic health record in an instant, would do the Cabrini calculation, and would pop up an alert. Hey, this person's high at risk for VTE. Do this order set to make sure that they don't get VTE. And we reduced the incidence of VTE by over 40%, saving hundreds and hundreds of lives in our institution. Imagine how many lives globally. So we gave that, we gave that one away. So those are three examples how if you know me, the organization, that if you know the vision, and because you know the vision, you hang out with us, you know our pain, you know yourself, you know what the risks are, we know who each other, what our roles and responsibilities are in partnership, then we can save people's lives together. And that's, I hope, one thing I may have shared today is helpful. And I know the panel after this is going to go much deeper and give you much better examples. Uh, but if one thing helped you today and you thinking about your next partnership and you save one life, it'll all be worth it. Thank you for having me speak.